Hi everyone, my name is Shelby Hartman. I'm Double Blind's co-founder and editor-in-chief, and today we're here to talk about psilocybe sub aruginosa. Psilocybe sub aruginosa is one of the most famous magic mushrooms in Australia, and if you're passionate about different types of shrooms, you should know about it. But before we get into it, I want to tell you a little bit about Double Blind. In case you don't know about us, we're a media company and education platform that covers all things pertaining to the psychedelic movement. We have a class on how to grow mushrooms with live support from mycologists. We have a class on how to microdose with support. We have a class on trip sitting. Basically anything that you need to know from taking the psychedelic, to integrating the psychedelic, to doing psychedelics in community, we have on the Double Blind platform. We also have a membership program where you can be connected with some of the world's leading psychedelic experts. So for more information about all of that, check us out at doubleblindmag.com. Now more about this magical, magical mushroom from the land down under. Australia has two main psilocybe species the tropical subtropical psilocybe cubensis, which is probably what you purchased if you ever bought shrooms from a guy who knows a guy or you've tried growing shrooms at home, and the temperate eucalyptus-loving psilocybe sub aruginosa. Psilocybe cubensis is an introduced species in Australia, but the latter, psilocybe sub aruginosa, grows natively in the Australian southeast. In Australia, Psilocybe subaruginosa is a very common and in some cases potentially weedy species found in forests, parks, playgrounds, and scattered around universities. The species occurs as far south as Matsuikur Island, a rugged island off the south coast of Tasmania, and as far north as southeast Queensland, a considerable distribution and dynamic range of habitats and substrates. It's even known to occur in the Central Business District, or CBD, of Melbourne. Psilocybe subaruginosa is very potent. It's actually among the most potent of the psilocybes, and possibly the most naturally potent at 1.93% psilocybin by dry weight, compared to 1.78% of psilocybe azurensis. But it's important to remember that Psilocybe subaruginosa, like most psilocybin-containing mushrooms, is illegal in most parts of the world. If you're watching this video, you might be interested in the Psilocybe subaruginosa's habitat, substrate, and history, but most likely, you're most interested in, how's it gonna make me feel? P-subs can be intense, highly visual, and potentially hyperdimensional. Their potent strength has also made them a popular choice for microdosing, since very little is needed to produce the intended effects. They're also a popular choice for microdosing because so little of them can produce the intended effects. Now, we have a lot of other videos on our website and even courses on how to take psychedelics, but generally speaking, the dosage range for a mushroom trip is gonna be somewhere between minimum one gram to three and a half grams. And with P-subs, because they're so strong, we definitely recommend that you start at that lower dose of one dried gram. That could be plenty, especially for someone who is not a very experienced psychonaut. And as we say in the psychedelic community, start low and go slow. You can always take more. It's also helpful to remain mindful of the growing substrate of the mushroom. So the potency of the mushroom can actually vary significantly depending on their growing medium. When foraged from wood chip beds, the consensus is that they may be particularly strong, even overwhelming. P-subs were discovered in Australia long before they became popular. The earliest recorded collection of the species was in June of 1915 in New South Wales. Mycologists made further collections in Victoria and South Australia. In 1927, Australian naturalist John Burton Cleland named and described the species. Cleland was one of the pioneers of Australian mycology. In 1934-35, to 35, he published, quote, toadstools and mushrooms and other large fungi of southern Australia, a two-volume monograph known to be one of the most comprehensive reviews of Australian fungi ever written. Yet it took another 35 years for P-subs to enter the public consciousness, and we have surfers to thank for that. During the 1960s, the east coast of Australia became a mecca for surfers. The barrel waves of the Gold Coast brought in an influx of American tourists, and they didn't come empty-handed. 
they brought a hefty dose of West Coast psychedelic culture, along with some rather interesting compounds and a knowledge of which mushrooms might be worth picking. In 1969, articles from the Sydney Sunday Telegraph and the Canberra Times reported on the newly popular pastime of foraging for Psilocybe cubensis in southern Queensland and northern New South Wales. After reading these newspaper reports, Picker and Rickards decided to investigate Psilocybe sub aruginosa. In 1970, they published a paper reporting that the species contained 0.45% psilocybin by dry weight. The knowledge about this species spread quickly with occasional newspaper reports on the dangers of collecting hallucinogenic mushrooms. Australians rediscovered their native magic mushrooms. So if you're interested in foraging for pea subs, let's talk about their habitat. They're known to thrive in various habitats and substrates, but they're most commonly found growing on eucalyptus debris. Pea subs are a temperate wood-loving mushroom thought to be endemic to Australia. It grows in the southern parts of the continent, Tasmania, Victoria, South Australia, and New South Wales. It's also found in a small pocket of southeast Queensland. It is an introduced species to southwest Western Australia, first found growing near the small town of Ballingup. The subject of the film, quote, Fungi Mentory, the magic mushrooms of Ballingup. Pea subs range in Western Australia appears to be spreading. Pea sub aruginosa also occurs in New Zealand. Like its American relatives, pea sub aruginosa favors an oceanic climate. In Southeast Australia, pea subs start fruiting from late March to mid-April, following a consistent drop of temperatures below 46 degrees Fahrenheit, or 8 degrees Celsius for everyone else in the world. This species also tolerates a Mediterranean climate, but rainfall is required to sufficiently moisten substrates before they begin fruiting. The season starts between late April to early May and extends through to July or September. In some extreme circumstances, they may fruit at other times of the year. Summer snowfalls or cold snaps in mountainous areas are enough to trigger fruiting. Psilocybe sub aruginosa is often found on the forest margins, disturbed areas, or the edge of trails growing singly or in groups. Their primary habitat is wet or dry sclerophyll forest, where they grow among but are not limited to eucalyptus debris and clumps of grass. In addition, they may grow on the fallen debris of bracken fern, man fern, and tea tree. They can also occur within pine plantations, growing on well-composted pine mulch, buried woody fragments, and the occasional pine cone. <laughs> So you live in Australia, or you're visiting Australia, and you've decided to go out and look for some Psilocybe sub aruginosa. How do you know that you've found them? Well, they're incredibly variable in their appearance, often adding to the confusion around this species. The caps can appear in a variety of shapes and shades of brown and yellow, sometimes cream. The stem can vary in thickness and length, sometimes growing straight and sometimes growing twisty. For these reasons, <laughs> Psilocybe aruginosis can be confused with various toxic genera that look similar and grow in the same habitat. Generally speaking, folks, do not eat a mushroom if you are not 100% sure that it is what you think it is. You can die. So the cap measures between 1 to 6 centimeters in diameter, but can grow larger in the right conditions. The mushrooms start with conical caps that become convex and with age upturned. Sometimes the cap undulates, strongly resembling psilocybe cyanescence. They often have an umbo, which is a pointed tip at the center of the cap. Psilocybe sub aruginosis has a hygrophanous cap, which will change color as the cap loses moisture. The caps vary markedly in color from dark to light caramel brown with a sticky texture. As the cap dries, they become light brown or golden brown, sometimes pale yellow or cream. As with many other psilocybin-containing mushrooms, all parts of P. sub aruginosa will bruise blue where damaged. The bruising is not immediate, but some parts of the mushroom bruise quicker than others. The gills bruise quickly, while the stem can take up to a couple of hours to bruise. That's worth noting if you're foraging for it in the wild. The bruising is due to the oxidation of psilocin, 
If you want more information about identifying this species, Entheogenis australis created a downloadable PDF identification guide, and we've linked to it in the article that we've written about Psilocybe subaruginosa, which is in the description below. Now a little bit about cultivating pea subs. I think I mentioned it before, but Double Blind has a mushroom growing course with live support from mycologists, including Kane Barlow, who wrote the original article on Psilocybe subaruginosa, which is the basis for this video. Growing psilocybe subaruginosa is illegal in most countries, although some North American cities have decriminalized cultivation. There's more than a dozen cities now that have decriminalized psychedelics, including psilocybin-containing mushrooms, at the local level, and there are more than 100 cities and counties that are looking to pass similar legislation. If you're inspired at Double Blind, we encourage you to get involved. Psilocybe subaruginosa grows willingly within mulched garden beds. Landscape gardeners may inadvertently spread wood chips containing pea sub spores through parks, gardens, university grounds, and inner city plant displays. For this reason, they have the potential to become weedy as they readily myceliate wood chip piles. When growing among woody debris, a distinctive feature of this species is the thick, white, rhizomatic mycelium that, quote, runs through the substrate and can spread large distances. It's also important to be aware of the fact that Pea subs are a wood lover species of psilocybin containing mushrooms, which means that there's a possibility that when you're tripping on them, you could get a very terrifying condition called wood lover's paralysis, where essentially you're frozen, you can't move. It's rare, extremely rare, but it's also important to be aware of because if it happens while you're tripping and you didn't know that it could happen, it can be terrifying. Um, so there was a survey that was conducted by an Australian psychedelic society which covered environmental and individual factors that may contribute to wood lover's paralysis and asked individuals about the experience. From those who reported having had wood lover's paralysis, the survey identified that the habitats and substrates involved were fairly equally represented as were preparation methods. What this is to say is that where the shroom is grown, whether you're buying it from someone on the black market or you're growing it yourself, does not seem to increase or decrease the chances of you getting wood lover's paralysis. It's important to bear in mind if you're interested in Psilocybe subaruginosa that there's so much that we just don't understand about this mushroom yet. And that's because there's simply a lack of research. All the research investigating psilocybin for depression, substance dependence, and other mental health conditions is looking specifically at synthetic psilocybin, not the whole mushroom and all of the alkaloids and compounds contained within it. That being said, our understanding of Australian magic mushrooms should be changing soon. There was an announcement out of the University of Queensland that mycologist and evolutionary biologist Dr. Alistair McTaggart has permission to legally collect native Australian magic mushrooms. So if this is something that you're interested in, stay tuned. We'll definitely be keeping you updated on the Double Blind platform. And in general, if you're interested, again, in learning more about psychedelics, whatever it may be, whether it's to microdose, to grow mushrooms, we are here to support you please consider signing up for one of our classes. All the proceeds go directly back to funding our journalism and making the work that we do possible. You can check all that out at doubleblindmag.com.